All right, so the first one that I have here would be the groupings. Well, the games may not have started yet, but if you don't do this right, there may be a few teams that are already set to lose. So please listen to me. If you are the organizer, make sure to assign the team members in a way where you have already considered their strengths, their weaknesses, their limitations, their age before you assign them to specific teams. You have to make sure that these people are evenly distributed across the teams as much as possible because we don't want to have teams who have unfair advantage over the others, right? So the thing is, in this camp that we had for a certain church, the participants have old members. It's not that we're counting them as weak, but let's be real. They have limitations, especially when it comes to physical activities, and we have to be considerate of that. So mix it up. Make sure that there are a number of young people, a number of older ones in a team, etc. I think you get what I mean. What else did we do is when it comes to the games, since our games here have stations, and each stations have one or more games, we made sure that each game will only have five to seven players, knowing the fact that each team will have around 10 to 11 members. Why is that? It's because we want to make sure that we have a certain allowance for people who are older so that they won't have to feel obliged to join because there's no other choice but to have 10 members to play, right? So it's like, Okay, in this game, we just need five. So if the others want to rest, if other members just can't do that game, then it's five. We just need five. And if it's just an easy game, then we're going to require seven because we believe a lot of people can participate with that. But it's if it's really hard, like, it's like it involves swimming or what, maybe just ask four. So at least if you have already this, if you have made this properly, if you have assigned your members properly, then at least you know that there are four members who are capable of doing this very strenuous task. Next is waiver. Well, since outdoor games could be highly physical, we need to be considerate of those people. We need to be considerate of those people who can't join. What we did is we announced beforehand that those people have limitations when it comes to their age or they have medical history or something or they're not feeling well like they have fever or they just have menstruation or something then they are not obliged to join it's okay for them to say no to those physical activities so what we ask them to do is approach us tell us what they what their concern is what their limitations are and it's fine you won't be giving their teams any demerit for it and then to be super duper sure especially like us if um we're the organizers and we don't really know a lot about the members we don't know about their medical history or something so maybe just to be safe i'm not saying that this is a requirement but just to be safe maybe you can come up with a small waiver for those who want to join that um they are physically fit and they think that they really want to join this and they don't have any medical conditions that might be triggered through these um, activities that we are going to have things like that so um it's just something that you can hold to just in case something happens you know because people can be super competitive that even though they have they know they have medical histories but then they still want to join and we appreciate them for that but of course um we just want to be safe as much as possible <clears throat> next is nurse with first aid or medicine kit so this is a church event right and i believe in a big church there could be at least one or two nurses registered medical nurses so probably set them aside ask them for a little favor that hey i'm sorry you can't join but you're gonna do a greater purpose i'm sorry you're not gonna play the games but you're gonna have a greater purpose and that is to serve your, the people so um again we're not again that's what i told you guys in the previous video that we're not actually praying for accidents to happen but since this is an outdoor activity we need to be prepared as much as possible so we need to be faithful stewards of what god has entrusted to us we have to make sure that we have the right people who are assigned to take care of those who need attention to and we also need to make sure that we have the first aid kit ready so next would be whistle and materials for each game master whistle is very helpful you don't want your game masters to lose their voice while they are um, officiating the games and then materials as well um maybe the mechanics the things that they need to prepare. Um, what I did is I made sure that I placed the mechanics and the other materials that they need inside an envelope. So they all have their envelopes and then of course we had to make sure that other materials as well are ready for them to use. 
And next would be run through. It's very much important, you know, guys, because um, even if you discuss the mechanics to your game masters, sometimes they just don't get it. Um, there are visual people, there are kinesthetic people. So if you just play it all out in your head and you think it's very much clear and they said yes, there are really times where they just, they just didn't get it. And you will see that during the games, they have a different set of games that they're doing. So yeah, make sure to check that one out. So make sure to have a mini run through, not necessarily do the entire game, but at least have the game master try it out or experience it. Or if you have a video about it, then let them see it. I think that's the easiest way possible. But well, having a mini run through can give everyone an idea how the event will, how you want the games to happen. And you can also foresee certain challenges and you might as well change some rules because you already experienced it beforehand. And then we have the score sheet for team and game master. So each game master will have their own score sheet because you know there are several teams, right? So there's this one main score sheet for that game and it already has all the teams right there the game master all the game master has to do is just write the data on it and then aside from that each team will also have their own score sheet as well that they have to carry around and have each game master sign once they accomplish their task and of course write the data like a time or something so what we had here we had one pre preliminary game it's called loading or unloading a game that we did simultaneously with everyone it's just like to something that was made to prepare everyone about the games actual games itself and then after the preliminary game we had seven stations some of these were time pressured ones like you have to finish it the fastest and then we're gonna record how much time it took for you to finish the task and the final one still sort of time pressured but we will not get the time or data itself but we will just get if you were the first second third fourth fifth etc to come to the station and do the task in short the seventh station can only be done once the team has accomplished all the six or else they won't be able to do it <laughs> okay so if you want to know more about those games make sure to check this one out right here this will show you how we did it and how we made sure that this is in line with the theme, the topics that we had for the camera itself. Thank you so much for watching. See you in this video.